Don't go away. Our feature film will begin shortly. It seems that you like watching these old mystery films from the 1930s and 40s as much as we all do. If you'd like to show your appreciation in a tangible way, then why not share a little love by giving us a one-time small donation? We'd appreciate that, as it will encourage us to continue on with this work of bringing these forgotten gems to you on a regular basis. Simply click on the donate link below, in this video's description, and while you're right there you can click on our mystery merch shop as well or visit us on Facebook, or find our free bonus movie link. Thank you so much. Now here's Randall Schaefer. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight the corridors of mystery take us to 1939 for a Warner Brothers release, Nancy Drew, Detective. Wealthy dowager Mary Eldridge wants to make a $300,000 donation to her alma mater. Current students will decide how to spend the money. Well, Nancy Drew leads the student committee that will decide how to spend that money. But Mary Eldridge vanishes before donating the money, and Nancy Drew and her boyfriend investigate at their peril. Playing Nancy Drew is Bonita Granville. She was born in New York City in 1923 and followed her parents into show business. Her movie career lasted about 10 years. She married a film producer and then became a TV producer herself. She produced many early TV shows, but she's best remembering for producing The Lone Ranger Show and Lassie. She died in 1988 at the age of 65. Playing her boyfriend tonight is Frankie Thomas. He was born in New York City in 1921, and he was acting by the age of 13. Like Bonita Granville, his movie career lasted just about 10 years until he could no longer play a teenager convincingly. During World War II, he served in the Coast Guard, and after the war, he worked mostly in radio. But in 1950, he got a big break. He was hired to play the lead in the TV show Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. And while you'd never hear something like this happening today, that TV show was so popular that at one time or another, it appeared on all three of the TV channels of the day. CBS, ABC, and NBC all played Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Let's return to 1939 and enjoy Nancy Drew, Detective. Nancy Drew, chairman of the committee, will now take charge. Thank you, Mr. Van Buren. Members of the committee, today I have the honor to present a very distinguished visitor, the lady to whom Brynwood owes its, its good fortune, Miss Mary Eldridge of St. Louis. 
My dear young ladies, most of you never heard of me until recently, but I was born here in River Heights and attended Brynwood, just as you were doing. That was 50 years ago. I have a great affection for this school. That's why I wanted to do something to show my appreciation for what Brynwood had done for me. So I'm giving my money to Brynwood and the students who are to come. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, Mr. Hollister and I are meeting at Mr. Drew's office to arrange the legal details. The amount will be $250,000. <laughs> Miss Eldridge, the figure was uh, 200000 I've changed my mind. As I understand it, you girls, uh, acting as a committee, conducted a vote of the students to determine to what use this money should be put. Is that right? Yes. yes. Well then, which is it to be? A new science building, a library, a fine arts building, or a new administration building? A swimming pool! <laughs> Well, I see the welcoming committee is on hand bright and early this morning. Morning, Good morning, morning. Good morning, morning girls. Look what we got from Miss Eldridge. Isn't it super? You, super, yeah. Very, very handsome. But don't you think it's rather a small gift for such a large donation? Oh, it's not the size of the gift that counts. It's the sentiment it represents. Oh, oh, I see. Well, perhaps you should add that to the inscription. Oh, yes. <laughs> girls, Miss Eldridge will be here in a moment. I think you'd better sit down. Nancy. I want you to make the presentation. Oh, I don't think I should make all the speeches, Miss Endearing. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. It'll be a good experience if you're going to be a lawyer. Oh, I didn't know you were planning to be a lawyer, Nancy. I think every intelligent woman should have a career. <laughs> morning, Mr. Hollister. Good morning. Where's Miss Eldridge? Miss Eldridge is gone. Gone? How what? come? Where? I don't know. She called me early this morning to tell me that she was leaving town for a rest cure. And not to try to find her because she didn't want to be disturbed. What about us? Oh, and she, she made no mention of a donation? Only that she regretted the necessity for leaving so suddenly. Then we, then we won't get our swimming pool. Seems rather strange. But, Mr. Hollister, didn't Miss Eldridge even say when she was coming back? No, Nancy, she didn't. Oh, believe me, I am sorry this had to happen. I know how disappointed you must all feel. If Miss Eldridge has changed her mind, you must understand and make allowances. She has her eccentricities, and one of them is a great fear of ill health. I see. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do about it, then. I'm afraid not. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. Thanks, Hollister. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll bet she never intended to give us any money. I'll bet she didn't Oh, either. she won't come back. She's just a crazy old woman. She's not. You mustn't say those things. You have to stick up for her because your grandmother went to school with her. You probably knew all the time she was just bluffing. Why, Teresa Lang... Young ladies, we must look at it philosophically. After all, Brimwood has survived a great many years without a swimming pool. Just the same. I'll prove Miss Eldridge meant what she said. I'll find her and... Get her to write a letter or something. You'll have to be a magician. Even if you do find her, she'll just figure full of hot air. Europe. I think we'd better go. Come, Suzanne. Good day, Mr. Drew. Good day. Well, Nancy, looks like we've got a fruit bowl, doesn't it? You think Miss Eldridge will come back, don't you, Dad? I think it best if you forget all about Miss Eldridge. I wouldn't let her spoil my vacation. After all, you know, she did seem a little bit um, eccentric. Eccentric? I'll show you, all of you. I'll find Miss Eldridge if it takes me a hundred million years.
I suppose this one went swimming. Don't forget the tickets. Hello, Effie. Good evening, Mr. Drew. What's that, Grace? Well, if it isn't, I've been swindled. Is that your dad? Yes, Nancy. Oh. Oh, you are, yeah. <laughs> Oh, if you'd only seen what happened this afternoon. Don't tell me you found Miss Eldridge. Oh, no, it's not Miss Eldridge. It's the North Road. I didn't see who was in it. Who was in the North Road? No, no, the touring car. I was driving along my way back from West Knoll when it happened. And I didn't know what to do about it because I wasn't sure that there was anything to it yet. So I tried to follow them, but I lost the car on account of the blow-up. I mean blow-out. The touring car blew up? Oh, no, no, Dad. You've got it all wrong. I had the blowout on my car, and that's why I wasn't sure it wasn't all right. Hold on. Hold on, young lady. You've got me a little dizzy. Now, start at the beginning and tell me very slowly. Well, here's what happened. I was driving through... Dr. Spires is on the phone. Oh. Dr. Spires? Uh, don't go away, Nancy. I want to hear that story. <laughs> Hello, Ray. What can I do for you? No, I didn't want to see you. But I want to talk to you anyway. I'm afraid to go to the police and... Well, if you, if you come over, I'll explain what it's all about. All right, I'll be right there. I'll drive you there. Whoa, whoa, it's me he wants to see. Oh, but I've got to go, Dad. It's my case and my fault, too. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I phoned Mrs. Spires this afternoon, pretended I was calling the doctor for you, because I didn't want to alarm her. Well, why should that alarm her? I saw Dr. Spires kidnapped. Kidnapped? Mm -hmm. Come on, Miss Sherlock. There were two men in the car. I was blindfolded and driven to a house which appeared to be far out in the country. It was a patient a woman with a dislocated shoulder, which had been clumsily treated. And you had no idea who she was? No. But I'm sure she was being held against her will. I was watched every moment by the man who took me to the place where she was. He held a gun on me. Besides, the patient was unconscious, as if she'd been drugged. Dr. Spires, was the patient an old lady? Yes, Nancy, she was rather elderly. Dad, I'll bet you 2380 that that woman was Miss Eldridge. You knew Mary Eldridge, Ray. Oh, so many years since I've seen her. It might have been she, but I wouldn't swear. Do you think you'd recognize that house again? You were very careful I shouldn't see the outside. But from the inside, it was a sort of a large, old-fashioned place. How long did you ride? Mm -hmm. An hour, I should judge. Well, assuming that you were traveling at the average speed of about 40 miles an hour... That would make it at least 30 miles from here. That's right, Nancy. Oh, there was one other thing. As we drove into that place today, the man driving muttered bluebells to someone on guard. Evidently at a gate, for I remember a driveway. Bluebells? That was probably password. a... Password? Yes, it must have been a password. Carson, I don't like the idea of getting involved in this, but I suppose we should turn it over to the police. Yes, but what about their threat? These men are apt to cause you a lot of trouble. I'm afraid I'll, I'll have to take that risk. Besides, you're a good lawyer and, well, you can explain it to the police without jeopardizing me, can't you? I suppose so. I'll try. Nancy, you wouldn't mind driving me over to police headquarters, would you? Mind? Don't be eccentric. Come on! <laughs> Good night, Ray. I'll let you know. Thank you. Good night, Dr. Spires. Good night, Ray. My hunch was right. That guy is Carson Drew. The lawyer? Yeah. Let's follow him. You know, it's just occurred to me, uh, Dr. Spires is deeply involved, as it appears, we may run into danger ourselves. We're probably being followed right now. What? What makes you think so? That car behind us with the dim headlight. Well, step up. Turn the corner. Get rid of it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, Dad, don't be so nervous. I was only kidding. Oh. <laughs> reason they're going in there. Spire's been shooting off his face. Now, you sure that's all there is? 
You know, sometimes it's the smallest fact or detail about a case that eventually leads to the apprehension of a criminal. Did you know that? I did, Captain Tweedy. I heard your broadcast. Another one of my fans, Mr. Drew. I've been getting a lot of letters about my broadcasting. <clears throat> Have you any theories concerning that house, Captain? Well, it's a strange story, Mr. Drew. It'll take a little thinking out. However, the place being so far out in the country, I'd say those crooks are running a gambling house. If I only knew who that old lady was. But Nancy thinks it might be Miss Eldridge, Captain. There's no proof. It's easy to find out. Just look around the country in a radius of 30 or 40 miles till you find a big old-fashioned house. That's all you have to do. That's all I have to do. I'm a busy man, little girl. There's hundreds, thousands of old-fashioned houses around here. Well, I thought that... Detective has to have more than that to go by. Could you uh, work on the license plate number of the kidnapped car? Uh, do you know it? I know the last part of it. 08. 08. The rest of the plate was padded with mud, so I couldn't read it. Don't worry about that, little girl. 08. That's the kind of information that's valuable to a detective. Are you sure you can find the car from those two numbers? Am I sure? Listen, I round up every car that ends in 08, and I'll grab that machine. Just like that. How many automobiles are there in the state, Captain Tweedy? Oh, a couple of million. Why? I was just thinking. That would be about uh, 20,000 licenses ending in 08, wouldn't it? Yeah, I guess. And since you don't know the state in which uh, the license was issued, you might have to look through about four or 500,000 cars before you found the right one. And you could do it just like that. My, that's wonderful. <clears throat> well, I guess we'd better be going. I'm very glad you've met a real detective, Captain Tweedy. Come, Nancy. Bye, Captain. Goodbye. Dad? Mm -hmm. Remember that car with the dim headlights? The one you were kidding me about? Yeah. Well, uh, what about it? Well, just supposing that it, it was the kidnapped car, and just suppose that it had been following us all the way from Dr. Spire's house. What would you do? Don't worry, Nancy. I'd think up something. Well, you better start thinking. They're right behind us. What? Hold tight, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to follow them for a change. Nothing doing, young lady. This is getting too dangerous for you. We're going home, and you're going to keep out of the whole affair while you're in one piece. From now on, it's up to Captain Tweedy. Captain Tweedy? I should say not. That conceited Tweet Tweet, what a character. I'll show him. You'll do nothing of the kind. Now drive home. But, Dad, what about my pride? He challenged me, actually threw down the gauntlet to me. Well, let it lay, Nancy. Let it lay. Ship! One, two, three, hip! Ted Nickerson, what are you doing in my flower bed? Well, I'm certainly not picking posies. Oh, oh man, you're hurt. Are you kidding? Oh, man, you're hurt. Oh, nothing can hurt him, can it, Ted? Boy, what a tackle. Do it again. He certainly won't do it again. Stop tramping in my flowers. You, you hoodlum. Oh. Go on, get out of here. I said get out. I said beat it. Beat it, you thug. And don't ever come back in here again. Ah, quit disturbing the molecules. Oh, just look at it. You ruined it. Oh, you can plant new flowers in the furrow I made. Yes, and you could tackle that dummy in some other direction, couldn't you? Well, that's the only place I can hang it. And I've got to keep in training for football. Now get that thing out of here. Gosh, it's an eternal mystery to me how anybody as smart as your father could raise such a dizzy daughter. Why, Ted Nickerson, okay, I... Okay, ought... okay. It's not a mystery. Well... Oh! Hey, Ted! Boy, look what I got here. Oh! <gasps> What's the matter? Oh, my flower garden. It's a pigeon. See, its wing's been broken. Bud Murphy, that's cruel and inhuman to treat a poor, dumb, crippled creature that way. Oh, he's not hurt that bad. Oh, you poor little precious. Poor precious boy. He landed on my pigeon coop this morning, but he ain't mine. Well, what do you expect me to do about it? Well, I was thinking maybe you could broadcast over your radio sending set and find out who he belongs to. Well, that's very honest and commendable of you, Spud. You should be rewarded. 
Say, I might at that. He may belong to the United States government. He has a number on his leg. Oh, he's a carrier pigeon. Oh, that's right. Look, here's the thing the message goes in. Say, I never saw that before. Yeah. Shoulder okay, bluebell. What kind of drivel is that? Bluebell, that's the password. What password? Ted, I've got to find out who owns this bird. Start your radio. Oh, you don't have to do that. All racing pigeons are registered with the American Pigeon Association. Just send them this number. 2211212. Gee, that's swell. Look, Ted, you take care of this pigeon till I get back. And don't you dare let anything happen to it. What's the idea? Right now, that bird's practically the most important thing in the world to me. Why give me the bird? So that proves absolutely that there's something crooked going on. And that about the shoulder being okay, and the message signed Bluebells and... Now, Nancy, it's no use arguing. You're keeping out of it. Dad, someone's holding Miss Eldridge, and we've got to do something. We? Oui. Have you read the morning paper? No. Well, I guess that'll slow you down. There it is. Oh. Dad, do you suppose it was those men who followed us last night? Certainly. They've shown that they'll stop at nothing. Well, that's all the more reason that we've got to find Miss Eldridge. Nancy, why are you so convinced that that injured woman is Mary Eldridge? I don't know. I guess it's just my woman's intuition. Every woman has one, you know. Yes, I know. Well, whoever the woman is, she'll be found. But it's not your job to find her. Those men are not going to stand for Nancy Drew poking her little nose into their affairs. You know, if that pigeon could be turned loose and followed, it might lead us to something. Of course it would. Now you're talking. Let's go. Hold on, young lady. You and I are not going anyplace. Dad, you're just as excited about this as I am. Maybe I am. But you're the only daughter I have. And for some unexplainable reason, I like you. A little. And I'm not going to trade you for any dead heroin. So you go home, get that pigeon, and take it straight to Captain Treaty. Oh, Dad. Victory's staring me right in the face. So am I. Oh. All right. Because you're my father, I suppose I'll have to do as you said. What's that you said? I said all right. All right. I won't have you driving down there alone. Get one of those other youngsters to go with you. Youngsters? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> okay, old man. Come in. Your signal's good and strong, but I think it's a little overmodulated. Come in, old man. Ted! Oh, Ted! Stand by, old man. Look at that poor pigeon with a rope on him. He's happy. Well, stop playing around with that silly old radio and help me build a crate or something. I've got to get this pigeon down at the police station. Besides, I have a thousand and one things to tell you. Oh, crud and guff. Sorry, old man. I guess I'll have to QRT. Local QRM. 73s, and I'll see you later. W8YZR is pulling the big switch. What kind of talk is that? I was just telling Jimmy Davis that I had to quit on account of local interference. Well, if you must insult me, you might at least do it in English. Well, if you ask me, which you didn't, I think your father's right. You're snooping around, somebody will knock your block off. I can take care of myself. Just like all women, aren't you? No one can convince you of anything. You may see things differently when you're as old as I am. As old as you? What are you talking about? You seem to forget that I'm 11 months, 29 days, and two hours older than you are. Well, statistics prove from 15 to 20, a woman is five years mentally older than a man of the same age. All right, keeper. I give up. Take me away. Put me in a straitjacket. Ooh. Ted Nixon, will you stop acting like an idiot? And get away and get this crate finished. It's finished. Well, come on, then. Here. All right. And be careful of him. He still looks a little ill. Sick to you. 2380, you'd look a little ill, too, if you were in his spot. Father intimated that I shouldn't ride down to the police station alone, so I guess you better go with me. Okay. But listen, I'm only doing it on account of your father. Ted Nickerson, you're about as chivalrous as a... an oyster. Okay, then. I'm an oyster. So what? So let's get going.
Now you've done it. I couldn't help it. Take it easy. All is not lost. You deliberately did that. You want to scare him away. Why, Ted, whatever makes you think that? I, I don't even breathe. I'm going to get a ladder. Thing's been hedge hopping for an hour. I guess its wing is still sore. Take off. There it goes again. Can you still see it? Yeah. Gosh, my neck's getting stiff. Suffering cats. What's the matter? I lost him. Oh, Ted. Well, heck, I couldn't help it. You've been watching something. Yeah, spots before my eyes. From staring at that darn sky so long. Now we'll never find that house. If you hadn't been so careless. There you go again. Why is it as soon as I get around you, I run into trouble? I can be thankful that after today you'll be out of my hair. Are you going away? And the family's rented a cottage up at Sylvan Lake. We're leaving tonight. I guess we won't be seeing each other anymore. Nope. What I mean is. I wasn't exactly blaming you for losing the pigeon, Ted. I guess it was just fate or something. Yeah. Ted, look! Huh? It's the pigeon. We must have missed it the last time it stopped to rest. Keep your eyes on it. Okay. I say, it's going round and round. Maybe it's dizzy. Nonsense. That's where it lives. I can see buildings through the trees. Look, Ted. There, there's the driveway and the gate, but, but there's no watchman. Maybe it's his day off. Just like Dr. Spire said it was. Get out. Get out? Yes, yes, go ahead. What for? You stay on guard here, and I'll go for the police. And don't you dare let anyone leave. And if they do leave, what do you expect me to do? Oh, I don't know, take them prisoners or something. Yeah, I'll surround them. Yeah. Dad, this is Nancy. I found the house. You did what? Nancy, I told you, keep out of sight till we get there. Police headquarters, please. Dad. Good work, Nancy. However, I'll talk to you later on, young lady. Is this the place? Yes, and I'm sure you'll find Miss Eldridge in there. All right, Elmer. Spread out your men attacking the south. You boys attacking the north. Me and Ed will handle the front. Got your gas guns ready? Good. Now cover all the doors and windows and watch the back while you're at it. And remember, when I blow the whistle, brush the joint. Okay, let's go. Okay. Now you kids keep back. You watch them, Drew. Why did he have to come? Come on! 
Hollister. <laughs> Mr. Drew, will you explain to these men who I am? Well, certainly. This gentleman is Miss Eldridge's business manager. Oh, yeah? Captain Tweedy, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. <laughs> I've made a mistake. Mr. Hollister, I, I didn't know you lived here. I only rented this place yesterday. Why? I like the country. Is there anything wrong with that? I must live somewhere until Miss Eldridge returns. Well, who had the place before you got it? The former tenant was a Mr. Tooker, but he's been gone a couple of months. You know, I think there's something going on around here you don't know anything about. I'll have to dig up this Mr. Tooker and see what he's got to say for himself. Do you know what happened to him? He died. There's no one else in the house. No one in back, Captain. Look, Mr. Drew, we drive out here 30 miles because you insist. And what happens? A wild goose chase. Now, that's a waste of the taxpayer's money. Well, I can't understand it. I'm sure that Nancy wouldn't Pardon me, Mr. Drew. I think your daughter has hallucinations. Uh, Captain Tweedy, would you mind telling me what this is all about? Well, this kid got her mitts on a pigeon. It was carrying some kind of a message. She said it had something to do with your boss. She said the pigeon came here. But I did see the pigeon land here. Yeah, so did I, right out back. Excuse me, Mr. Pigeon. Uh, uh, Hollister. Have you got pigeons? Yes, there are pigeons here. They belong to the owner. If they have anything to do with Miss Eldridge, I certainly think we should investigate. Which one is it, Nancy? I, I can tell it because its wing has been hurt. Do you, Ted? No, I don't either. It's not here. I thought so. Nancy, are you positive you saw that pigeon stop at this house? I'm practically positive. So, your daughter's a detective, is she, Drew? Well, the police have got a lot of other things to do besides running around playing kids' games. If we follow any more of these phony leads, we'll wind up skipping a rope. <laughs> Now, little girl, you'd better go back to the kindergarten and play with your dolly. <laughs> Psychopathic case. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Hollister. That's all right, Nancy. Good day, Hollister. Sorry. Good day, Drew. Come along. Forget Nancy. it. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, son. Kid found the Tucker house. Huh? There'll be an investigation if she goes to the police. It already has. But Hollister saw the girl and her boyfriend hanging around and was expecting them. Cops find anything? No. They were even sore that they were called out to the joint. Just the same, I don't like it, Challen. This place was running pretty smoothly until you let Hollister bring that old woman here. There's nothing to worry about. There's no evidence at the Tucker house. And as a lawyer, you seem to it that all the contracts our guests have signed with the sanitarium are perfectly legal. But she hasn't signed yet. No, but she will. I'll find a way to take the stubbornness out of Miss Eldridge. What if she tries to get away again? Next time, she might break more than her shoulder. You can depend on it, Thorne, that if that old buzzard has 300 Gs to lay out, it's going to be to us and not to any school for Dillis. It's Hollister I'm worried about. He's green and apt to make a slip. Worth the risk. In the meantime, if Drew and his kid keep on the way they've been going, we'll have to have the house full of cops. Then I suggest that you do something about the Drews. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Ted, 
Jane, I was sure that was the house. Boy, am I mortified. You mortified? That a chap, a monk. Listen, I gotta get home. We're leaving for the lake tonight. Good evening, Nancy. Good evening, Mrs. Spires. Hiya, Miss Spires. How's the doctor feeling? He's a little better now. I'm so glad. I, I don't suppose I could see him. Well, he shouldn't talk very much. I wanted to ask him something. It's terribly important. Well, you can see him for a little while, honey. Thank you. I'll be back in a minute, Ted. Okay. It's Nancy Raymond. Hello, Dr. Spires. Oh, hello, Nancy, dear. What is it, darling? I, I hate to bother you, Doctor, but when you were riding in that car yesterday, could you tell what kind of road you passed over? First, there was the highway. And I remember going over planking. A wooden bridge, I think. A wooden bridge? Yes. Then after a while, there was a turn in the road. And it was bumpy. Then when we got near the house, there was a gravel driveway. Gravel driveway? Yes. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I could hear it crunching under the tires. Well, gee, thank you. That, that helps a lot. I'm ever so much obliged. Mm. I do hope you feel better. And if there's anything I can do, I... Oh, thanks, darling. I, I'm getting on fine. Well, good night. Good night, Nancy, dear. The house we found today was not the right place, because there wasn't any gravel driveway. You know something? I've been thinking. We shouldn't have followed that pigeon. Huh? We should have gone the other way. Oh, Ted, you're off your hook. No. If I wanted to find the house Doc Spires was taken to, I go to where the pigeon came from, not where he was going. Gee, Ted, that's plenty sharp. But, but how could we find where it came from? Well, a pigeon always flies in a straight line, doesn't it? And Spud said that pigeon today flew right over River Heights going southeast. South... Southeast. Then it had to come from directly northwest of here. Uh -huh. Maybe 30 or 40 miles. That'd be up around Sylvan Lake. Check. Ted, look. There's somebody trying to break into our house. Do something. For gosh sakes, what? I don't know. You could... You could tackle him or something, you know, the way you did that dummy, and, and knock him down. Yeah. But suppose he don't stay down. Oh, yeah. Well, you tackle him and... I'll hit him over the head with this wrench. Okay. But hit him. Yeah. I'm quiet. Gosh, Mr. Drew, we thought it was a burglar or something. It is something. It's me. Why are you trying to get in the window? Because I forgot my key. And that fool Effie won't come to the door. Well, wait a minute, Dad. I've got a key. Well, why didn't you say so? What comes off here? It won't open. Get out of the way. Stand there. Give me a hand. Oh, sure, Mr. Drew. Sure. What? What the? Gosh, Mr. Drew, I mean, gosh. Effie! 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 Hello! Where are you, Effie? She's not here, Dad. Well, where in heaven's name is she? I don't know. Effie! Effie, what's been going on here? There was a man trying to get in. That was me, idiot. Oh, no. That one was a strange man. What? Yes, and he had a gun. 
run. And he tried to get in, so I slammed the door in his face. And then I piled the furniture up against it. And then I hid in the cellar. Well, why didn't you call the police? Oh, well, I never thought of that. All right, Effie, I'll take care of this. Yes, sir. You better go and replace that furniture. Yes, sir. Oh, well, what are you waiting for? Oh, yes, sir. Dad, I, I wonder what it could be. I mean, I... Just... <laughs> Stay where you are, all of you. Drop that. You drools are getting too nosy to stay healthy. And you, kid. Drop that wrench. I'm trying to style a lot of things you can't finish, so I'm giving you all one warning. What are you posing for? What spy has got to look like a beauty treatment compared to what you're running to unless you stay in your own backyard. Who sent you here? You're supposed to be a pretty smart guy, Drew. Well, figure this one out. If you care anything for the brat, and I think you do, drop that. You'll keep her out of our way. From now on, you're going to be watched. And the first move she makes, something happens. You don't need to worry about that. We're leaving town tonight. That's a smart idea. And don't be in any hurry to get back. I'm through. I'm quitting. I'm leaving this house at once. Effie! Do you want me to call the police, Mr. Drew? No, no, Ted. Those fellows mean business. You bring in the police, or I have to carry out their threat. Dad, Effie's quit again. Yes. I left all the furniture piled up. Come on, give me a hand, will you? You bet. You, you didn't mean what you said about... I mean, about going away tonight, did you, Dad? Yes, I did, Nancy. Well, where? Well, I, I haven't had a chance to explain, but I have a little surprise for you. We've heard from Miss Eldridge. You what? Yes. Mr. Hollister had a letter this afternoon. She's in a private sanitarium. She didn't give the name of it, but it's someplace in St. Louis. Hollister wants me to meet him there and help find her. Well, I, I was so sure. Well, I guess you were barking up the wrong tree this time, Nancy. I guess my woman's intuition just didn't function or something. Well, never mind that, dear. You go and pack your things now. Oh, Ted, uh, you might as well go home. That man may still be watching out there. There's no use to involve you. Well, look, Mr. Drew, I, I kind of thought maybe I'd better stick around in case he comes back. That won't be necessary. But I promise you, if we need help, we'll call on you first. Okay. Dad, I don't want to go to St. Louis. You don't? I thought you were so interested in Miss Eldridge. Well, I, I was, but, but now that you've found her, there's nothing else to do. And, and besides, I don't want to sit around in an old hotel room. Well, I'm certainly not going to leave you here. Why can't I go up to Sylvan Lake? Alone? I should say not. Not alone. The Nickersons have invited me. Say, we didn't... They were very insistent, weren't they, Ted? Uh... Yeah, I guess they were. Well, you might be better off up there at that. Of course I would. You'll explain to your mother, won't you, Ted? Oh, sure, sure. I'll... Thanks, Ted, that's fine. I know you two kids will have a lot of fun up there together. And you've no idea what it'll mean to me to have Nancy up there with you and your folks. Safe, quiet, restful. Not half as much as I hope it'll mean to me. Now, go away, Ted. You'll have to carry my bag. Quiet, restful. Hey, Ma, where's the bacon? There isn't any, Theodore. What's the matter? The recession still on? Oh. Morning, Ted. Hi, Nancy. Ma, you're certainly stowing it away. Well, oh, guy's got to live. If you women had your way around here, a man would starve. How quaint. How stark. How, How gruesome. gruesome. What's the matter? Don't you like cherries? I'm saving it for last. Ted, we've got to rally around and get organized. Where do you think we're going to look today? Will you forget Miss Eldridge for one day? I'm tired. I certainly will not. I've been telling you and telling you she can't be around this part of the country if she's in St. Louis. I'm not so sure that she is in St. Louis. Now look, Sherlock. You edged in on this trip just because you thought that house was somewhere up around here. Well, I've tagged around with you for three days and you still haven't found it. Now, I'm through. I'm going fishing. All right, all right. Stop beating your gums. I'll go fishing with you. Now, you're talking. If you'll stop by town long enough for me to wire Dad. Duped again. For God's sakes, how much longer we got to hang around here? 
Well, we gotta wait till we get an answer from Dad, don't we? If Dad has found Miss Eldridge, I'm crazy. I think you got something there. I'll rent you a padded cell. Ha uh ha, -huh. you're about as funny as Captain Tweedy. What a character. Miss Drew, here's that answer from your pa. It looks like you're kind of in for it. All right, sling it on. Told you to forget Case. Stop. Keep out of it. Stop. I insist. Stop. I guess you better stop. Have important information concerning Eldridge's disappearance. Stop. I'm taking first plane. Stop. Imperative, you mind your own business until I arrive. Dad. Ain't it gruesome? Now we can have some fun. Well, I didn't say I'd been doing anything. Why'd you tell me to mind my own business? Oh, he knew you weren't minding your own business just because you're still walking and talking. He didn't even mention whether or not he found Miss Eldridge. Well, who cares? He could have at least told me what was so important that he's learned. Yeah, but he did. Now, come on. How are we going fishing? Oh, I guess so. Hot stuff. Say, listen, I know the swellest place to go trolling. And just to show you that I'm a right guy, Nancy, I'll let you roll the boat. Thank you too much. Ted, give a look. There's Mr. Hollister. Oh. He can't be here. He's in St. Louis with Dad. Maybe his twins. What's he doing at Sylvan Lake? Well, why don't you ask him? Come on, hurry up. Now look here, Nancy Drew. Your dad said that... It's the kidnap car. We gotta follow them. Kidnap car? Gosh. Ted Nickers and I... Keep it clean. Keep it clean. What the idea? Pull the scan of the sons of Ola's phone. What did he say to you? <laughs> My foot slipped. And the car's out of sight. Yeah. And at the rate he was going, we wouldn't catch him in 2,380 years. It's all your fault. Uh-huh. I was expecting that crack. You know something, Ted? No, what? I bet you're 2,380 that Mr. Hollister lied about Miss Eldridge. You mean he knew where she was all the time? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. It's all beginning to dawn. That message signed Bluebells was to him. In that case, why, he's mixed up with that mob that kidnapped Doc Spires. And that St. Louis gag was just to get Dad and me out of the way. Uh-huh. Ted, we've got to find that house. Now, look, we've, we've searched all over the country. But it has to be around here. Personally, I'd rather go fishing. You wouldn't want me to drive around all alone, would you? Then hire yourself an aeroplane. Nobody will bother you up there. That's an angle. How much do they cost? Why, the, uh, the guy down at the lake airport charges $10. Why? Five, six, seven, seven fifty, eight, eight dollars and four cents. Have you any money? No. Ted Nickerson, you have so. I saw you break a five yesterday. Oh, gee, and I wanted to rent a boat with these two bucks. Come on, let's go. I not only have to furnish the ideas, but I got to finance them. Will you? Oh, Ted, let me see. Relax, will you? Relax. Now, if we can only put them together. This one goes here. There. Yeah. Well, look, this one matches in here, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Gee, it's a regular aerial map. Now, here, here's the house, and there's the highway. 
This must be the wooden bridge that Dr. Spires was talking about. And this is the dirt road running through the trees. And this is the turn-off. It was bluebells. Bluebells are also larkspur. Larkspur, bluebells, a bumpy road. This is it. I'm not sure I like this snooping around. Next thing you know, you'll get me nervous. Just like Dr. Spire said. And the watchman. And the gravel driveway. The place looks like a regular sanitarium. Yeah, it doesn't. We've got to find some place to sneak inside. Come on. Okay. I think we can get over here. Nancy, I think you're making the mistake of your life going in there. Why don't you get the police? Make sure this is the place. We might be sued for slander or libel or something. Hey! Oh! What did you do that for? You want to kill yourself? Huh? See those insulators? That top wire is charged with electricity. Electricity? Ted, you saved my life. Let's get out of here. Ted, we just have to think of a way to find out if Miss Eldridge is in there. Yeah, but we can't get inside the grounds. We can if the password's still bluebells. I've got an idea. Do I figure in this idea of yours? Of course. I think it'll work. You think it'll work? Well, that's not enough. Why didn't you say so? Come on. I was awfully nervous for a second. How do you think I felt? Pull over in those trees so the car won't be noticed. Okay. you go in there alone. But I got to, Ted. I'm sure I can find the room from what Dr. Spires said. I know it's upstairs. You wait out here by the car. Good luck.
are you screaming about? Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, Miss Tyson. I... I thought I heard someone at the window. You're lying. You're screaming just to make trouble. Now, any more hysterics, and you'll be put where your screeching won't bother anybody. Nancy, child, what are you doing here? I came to help you if you want to get away. Of course I want to get away. They're trying to drive me insane, to steal my money, the money I was to give Brimwood. Oh, I knew it. Here, put these things on so the game won't know you. It's a real sanitarium, Miss Alvin. It's run by a bunch of crooks preying on old women. They keep us in wheelchairs to weaken us, dope our food so our minds won't be right. So we'll sign over everything we've got for a comfortable old age. Oh, that's awful. How did you get here? By the night before I was to make the school donation, I was taken suddenly very ill. Mr. Hoster suggested that I come here. Some girly? Not especially. Hey, you! I just flattened the guy. Oh. That gunman that came to your house. How'd you do it? Listen, I'm not gonna stop to tell you stories now. Duck. What's the matter? Starter's dead. What are you doing around here? Drove in just a minute ago. Gave the password and said they was expected. What's going on? This kid's a friend of that Drew outfit. Oh. Keep your hands off me. The Eldridge Dame. Then there must be another one. Come on out of there. Well, Nancy Drew. I don't care what you do to me, but you can't harm these young people. We'll take care of you later, Miss Eldridge. Take her to our room. And this time, Miss Tyson, see she stays there. Don't worry. She won't get away again. I want to know what you're going to do to those children. Forget it. Sure, this is a Drew kid? Of course I'm sure. What's your name? Ted, uh, Theodore Nickerson. Well, I don't know how you two found this house, but the fact that you did is very unfortunate. What are you going to do to us? I don't know. Listen, gentlemen, I warned you about Drew and this kid. How do you know they haven't blabbed the police? I'm sure they haven't. The cops would have been here by now. Well, what are you planning to do? Adopt them? I doubt if it'll come to that. Hollis will be here soon. He may have some ideas. Put him in the cellar. Come on. Step along, sister. Get down there. See that you keep quiet.
haven't left a light. I'm scared. I don't feel so hot myself. Oh, I didn't think we'd ever get anything like this. I should have listened to Dad and you. Oh, gosh, we had to try and help Miss Elders, didn't we? I guess so. Huh? I think I'll a match. out of here. Even if we did get out, we couldn't get off the grounds. Well, at least it'd be better than this. Maybe we could find the telephone. I don't suppose they'd have a phone, or they wouldn't have used those carrier pigeons. Say. Look at this. What is it? An old x-ray machine. Boy, if it only works. That's the finish, then. We'll never get a cent out of the old lady now. Well, what are we going to do with her? Perhaps you can convince her there's nothing wrong and let her go. There's no proof that anything... Nothing doing, Hollister. Your bringing that Eldridge woman here has cost me plenty. With what she knows about this place, I can kiss this business of mine goodbye. Well, that's not my fault. If you hadn't stalled around... Don't try to put the blame on me. You're in this thing as deep as we are. Only you tried to be clever throwing the Drews off the trail. Well, how did I know he was going to leave the girl behind? I suggest we be smart now and get out while there's still a chance. We've got the kids on our hands. You'll have to turn them loose. What for? Put the finger on us? What do you think we are? Well, what else can we do? There's still a way to get some dough out of this, and I'm not quitting empty-handed. How? Miss Eldridge won't come through now. I'm not talking about her. Carson Drew has a little money, and so have the Nickersons. They both want their kids back. You'll never get away with that. I'm going to get away with it. We're leaving here right now, and the kids are going with us. And since you've come this far with us, you're going the rest of the way. I won't do it, and I won't let you. I'm going for the police myself. Okay, here she goes. Oh, boy! Now for a guy who understands code. We've been unable to locate Station it. KS3, yes, madam. The interference is affecting all radio sets. Station KS3, station KS3. No, 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 Okay, Joe. Excuse the interruption, friends of Radio Land. Cherchez la femme. Find the woman. You might as well but... say that a while, Cap. There's no use trying to broadcast with this disturbance going on, you know. Let's grab a smoke, shall we? Oh, there you are. They told me I'd find you here. Shh, Mr. Drew, I'm on the air. You're not saying anything. I will be in a minute. Well, what I have to say won't take that long. I'm on my way to Sylvan Lake, and I've got to hurry. Now, Mr. Drew, will you please have a seat? And as soon as I'm finished, I'll be only to... Will you listen to what I have to say for a minute? Certainly, Mr. Drew. All right. When I arrived in St. Louis, I found a wire from Hollister saying that he was detained here. After I had no luck in trying to locate Miss Eldridge myself, I got suspicious. So I made inquiries about Hollister, and I found that he had promised to pay large debts within 30 days. Well, I thought you might like to know that. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. So you think Hollister kidnapped the old dame for her dough, eh? Well, roughly speaking, that's the idea. Hey, this is code. S 
Y L V A N. I tell you, Mr. Drew, I've had experience Captain, in these. That things. disturbance was a code message. It concerns you. Jump in Jupiter, Mr. Drew. It's about your daughter. My daughter? What about her? I'll see. She and the Nickerson boy are held by a gang out in the country. What? I know the place. Well, where is it? Let me see, where is that? Used to be an old rest home. Yes? Uh, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, uh, the Hennessy estate. Well, come on. Cap, you're on the air. The air? Yeah, well, well, well you take it. All right, Thorne, get the car. Leave the back way. Keep forget those kids and hang on to them. Come on, mate, get it in. Come on, you make it snappy. If you come any closer, I'll... I'll shoot! Give me that thing, girlie, before it bites you. that work. Are you all right, honey? Bust it through that window. <laughs> Where's Ted? Ted, maybe I shot him. Shot. Ted! Ted! Is the... Is the war over? Lock him in the car and keep him there. <laughs> oh, well. Well, Mr. Drew, I have to admit, your daughter's a pretty brave girl. There wouldn't be many kids that even pick up a cannon like that, let alone get her. Well, it's a cleanup. Hollister was just coming out of it when we found him. Now those boys won't take you or any other old dame, uh, uh, ladies for their dough. We're all very grateful to you, Captain. Even if most of the credit does go to Nancy. Yes, Tweety, you'll have to go a long way to find anybody as wide awake as my Nancy. Hastings Mystery Theater is coming to you from Hastings, Michigan, USA. We originally created this series for local access TV, around 2010, and in 2019 started uploading to YouTube to share these classic films from the 1930s and 40s with their worldwide audience. And don't forget to check out our mystery theme merchandise which you can find in the description below. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again for your kind support that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Coming soon to Hastings Mystery Theater. You know who did this? The man in question has been in this room before. He'll come again. Who is he? The Black Parrot. The Black Parrot? But these cuts are so petit, so small. Almost like the bite of a snake. Yes, or a sharp-billed bird like a parrot. <laughs>